Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be making a sweater, but not just any sweater. We're going to be trying out the Marlow sweater pattern by True Bias. Now, if you guys keep up with the sewing community on YouTube or on Instagram, you'll probably know that this pattern is extremely popular. I feel like I'm so late to this party because it seems like almost everyone in the sewing community has tried out this pattern already. But I'm really excited to work on this today because, because it's early February here and usually that would mean bitter cold temperatures but we've actually been having a very mild winter, so I'm already starting to think a little bit about spring sewing. So I thought before I dive fully into the world of spring sewing, I wanna do one or two more wintry sewing projects. So I figure if I make this pattern now, I'll still have time to wear it before spring comes, which is great. I've had this Mood Fabrics double knit in my stash for about the last year or more and I knew that it was destined to become this Marlowe sweater, but I just never got around to doing it, so I thought it would be a great project to do now. Also, it is a relatively simple sew. Recently, I finished making my Oslo winter coat, which was a really fun project, and if you haven't seen it, I'll link the video in the cards above. But that was a really long and really involved project with lots of steps, so needless to say, I'm in the mood for something really quick and easy to sew. I'm seeking that instant gratification. So I think this pattern will work really well. If you're curious, I'm sewing this up in a size six. My body measurements correspond pretty well to either the size four or the six. And I thought I'd go with the larger size just to err on the side of the caution because it is supposed to be an oversized look. So I didn't want it to end up looking too tight. So without further ado, let's get into this project. I just finished cutting out my pattern pieces for the Marlowe sweater, and I've chosen to make view A, which is the crop version. To be honest, I like the look of both the cropped and the long version, but I thought for now I'd start with the cropped because it's a little bit simpler to make because it doesn't have pockets. I've cut this project out in a fabric from my stash. This is a really pretty double-sided knit I got from Mood Fabrics, and I believe it's a wool blend. So it has a really nice feel to it, and I don't think it's going to be itchy. It's called double-sided because, as you can see, one side has this light blue color, and the other side has this kind of deeper teal color. So you could use either side of this fabric in your project, which would be really neat. I like the teal side, so that's what we're going to be using today. So let me show you the pattern pieces for this project. So the first piece we have is this raglan sleeve, and I cut two of these. Next we have the front bodice piece, and I cut two of these as well. Then there's the back bodice piece, and this was cut on fold, and just cut one of these out. This is the waistband piece, which is also cut on fold. These two pieces are the wristbands, and these pieces are the neckbands. Again, I cut out two of these. Then I cut two pieces of this neckband interfacing piece, and I also cut out my button and buttonhole guide, so I'll have this for when I attach my buttons and buttonholes at the very end. So we have all the pieces we need here, so it's time to get sewing. So the first step was to pin the neckband sections right sides together. I finished my seams using a mock overlock stitch and pressed the seam allowances to one side. Then with the wrong sides touching, fold the neckband in half lengthwise and press. Once you have this press line in place, you can use the center line you pressed in as a guide for where to attach your inner facing for this project. The inner facing is placed about one centimeter from the raw edge of the bottom at both sides of the neckband. Once you've attached your interfacing, repress the neckband with the wrong sides together, then fold and press the waistband in a similar way you did to the neckband, except for this step, there's no interfacing. Then I pin the front bodice pieces to the back bodice piece, right sides together, along the shoulder seams. I use some clear quarter inch elastic here to stabilize the shoulder seams. I like to attach this with double sided washable tape to hold it in place. And then I carefully stitch on top of it, making sure to catch the clear elastic in my seam line. 
I then trimmed my seam allowance and pressed it towards the back. When you're pressing this seam, be careful because your iron can melt the clear elastic. I've definitely made that mistake before. So just go slowly and make sure you're using a low heat and don't leave your iron on the clear elastic for a long time. I also top stitched catching the seam allowance on the underside of my stitch from the right side. And I like to do this to keep the seam allowances neat and tucked under. Next, I pin my sleeve piece right sides together along the armhole edge of the bodice. There are some notches here to help you make sure you're lining everything up correctly, and then you can go ahead and sew this with a 1cm seam allowance, or 3 8 of an inch. And throughout this whole process, I'm using a mock overlock stitch to finish all my seams. I trim my seams down, and then I press the seam allowances towards the sleeve. Then with right sides together, I lined up the underarm seam of the sleeve piece as well as the side seam of the bodice. And I went ahead and stitched this together using one continuous line of stitching, starting from the wrist all the way down to the waist. Then it was time to do the waistband, and remember we'd already folded the waistband in half and pressed it before. So then we line up the raw edges of the waistband with the raw edge of the sweater, and stitch along this line with a half an inch seam allowance. Trim my seams and I press them upwards towards the sweater and similar to other steps I did decide to top stitch and catch my seam allowances underneath to help keep the waistband lying nice and flat but this is optional of course. So first we need to finish the raw bottom edge of the neckband piece before we go ahead and pin it on. So fold your neckband piece so that the right sides are inward so it's the opposite way to how we pressed it before and stitch along the bottom edge with a one centimeter seam allowance. And then turn it back out to the right side so the right sides of the fabric are facing outwards and you should have a nice neat corner. Now this piece is ready to attach to the sweater. So you can pin the neckband piece right sides together against the open front edge of the sweater. And when you're doing this, the side of the neckband that we interfaced before should be lying against the fabric of the sweater. You're going to need to stretch the neckband piece to fit the edge of the sweater. There are notches to help you do this. Most of the stretching is going on towards the back of the neck. You shouldn't need to stretch the front of the neckband very much. It should lie pretty flat against the front piece of the sweater. Then I went ahead and sewed up the seam again with my mock overlock stitch. I trimmed down the seams and then I pressed the seam allowance back towards the sweater. I went ahead and top stitched all the way around along the front right side, catching the seam allowances underneath and this is suggested to do in the pattern. This will help your neckband lie nice and flat. So next up, we're gonna get the cuff pieces of the sleeves ready to go. So I pressed the cuff pieces wrong sides together lengthwise. So after pressing, I opened up the piece of fabric and I put it right sides together and sewed along the short edge using a one centimeter seam allowance and my mock overlock stitch. One tip I have for you today can help you avoid really bulky seams when it comes to cuffs. So I recommend to snip the seam allowance in the middle of the cuff and snip very carefully and get as close as you can to the seam line without actually cutting through it. And then you can press the seam allowance to opposite sides as I've done here. And this is helpful because once you go to fold the cuff and wrong sides are together, the seam allowance isn't actually doubled up on itself. There's one piece of the seam allowance lying on either side, which helps to reduce bulk. So then I pinned my cuff right sides together against the sleeve hem edge. And you do need to stretch your cuff a little bit here to match up well with the hem edge of the sleeve. So just take your time and make sure you're distributing that stretched area evenly across the cuff. Then I sewed the cuff to the sleeve using a one centimeter seam allowance and a mock overlock stitch. And then I pressed my cuffs down and the seam allowance up towards the sleeve. Finally, it was time to do the buttons and buttonholes. So this pattern does provide a buttonhole guide you can use if you want. 
I prefer to measure out my own distances between my buttonholes based on how my sweater was looking and where I wanted the buttons. And my buttonholes were about an inch and a half long. So I always test my buttonholes on a piece of scrap fabric first, always the same fabric that I'm using for my project. Luckily my buttonholes weren't giving me too many problems today so it was really easy. It worked well so I went ahead and sewed my three buttonholes onto the front of my sweater. Once the buttonholes were done, I marked the placement of my buttons using a mix of my own marking as well as the buttonhole guide provided by the pattern. I sewed on my buttons by hand. One tip I have for you for sewing on buttons is to use a fabric glue stick. So I recently got this fabric glue stick and it's a temporary adhesive so I like to put it all over the back of my button and then press the button onto the fabric. And this helps prevent the button from moving around when I'm trying to sew it on. Once you put your project through the wash, the glue just washes away. So it's the easiest way that I have personally found to get really accurate placement of your buttons. So I'd recommend you try that out too. So guys, we're all done. I threw my garment in the wash to get rid of all the chalk markings and now we're ready for the reveal. So I'm all done my work sewing up this Marlowe sweater and I'm really happy with how it turned out. You already saw the try on so let's talk a little bit more about the pattern, what went well, what I learned and what I would change for next time. So overall I really like the pattern. I sewed it up in a pretty usual size for me which is a 6 and I think it fits pretty well. Now if you followed my channel for a while you guys probably know I prefer my clothes to be oversized so I think next time I make it I will probably make it in an 8 just to even give that a little bit more of a slouchy oversized look. This is how the cropped fit sits on me. For reference, here is the top of my jeans. These are high-waisted jeans, so it just covers the top of my high-waisted jeans, which is a really nice place for it to sit. I'm about five foot six or 167 centimeters tall, so I hope that might help you understand how long this will be on you. The sleeve length for me is a little bit short. If I lift up my arms, there's about an inch between the end of the sleeve and the top of my hand or my wrist. I don't mind shorter sleeves because, you know, if I'm washing dishes or if I'm cooking dinner or if I'm typing, I actually prefer that my sleeves aren't getting in the way, so I don't really mind. But something to keep in mind, if you're taller than me or if you have really long limbs, you might want to add an extra inch or two onto the length of the sleeve. In terms of the pattern instructions and putting it all together, as you saw, it is a very simple sew. I actually think this would be a great pattern for you if you're a beginner and if you haven't sewn with knit fabrics before. This is a really easy way to get started with knits. I did have a little bit of trouble on the underarm seam of one of my sleeves, but the other one came out perfectly. To be completely honest, I think I was just rushing a little bit because I was eager to get this project done. So as I always say, slow down, take your time. If I marked and pinned really carefully, I think I would have been able to get a perfect finish on both of my underarm seams. So I did add a few top stitching details that the original pattern doesn't call for. The pattern does recommend that you top stitch along this edge of this kind of collar piece. So I did that. I also top stitched over top of my waist piece just to help the, the waistband lie really flat. And I did also top stitch on my shoulder seam as well because I think it helps the seam lie really flat. And as you saw during the making process, I did add some clear elastic into the shoulder seams. I always do this for knit garments. The pattern instructions do suggest that you do this, so I would recommend it. And you probably noticed I used my little hack that I always use with my double-sided washable tape to hold the clear elastic down while I'm sewing it, and it turned out really well. The three-button detail in the front is a really cute and fun way to add a little bit of personality. As you saw in the try-on clips, I think the cardigan looks really great worn buttoned up like this for that kind of 
casual look, I'm just wearing it over an undershirt, or it also looks great open as well. You could even omit the buttons and buttonholes if you feel like you're never gonna button it up and you're always gonna wear it open and that would save you a little bit of time as well. I thought the pattern instructions were really clear. I had no problem with them. They could have gone into a little bit more detail with pressing certain seams and things like adding in the clear elastic. I think if someone is a brand new beginner to sewing, they may have been a little bit unsure, but on the whole, the pattern instructions were really, really great and I personally had no problems with them. In terms of the fabric I chose, I think it was a great choice for this project. It's this medium weight knit from Mood Fabrics. It's a wool blend. It's really comfortable. I don't find it's itchy at all. And it's a nice kind of medium weight for this project. I think it worked out really well. I also love the color. I wasn't overly excited about the color when I started this project. I was just using it up because I had it in my stash. But now that it's all done, I just love how it looks. So I'm definitely planning on making this cardigan again. I have one more Mood Fabrics double knit in my stash and it's got a deep chocolatey brown color on one side and a salmon pink on the other side. And I think it would be really fun to try to make a cardigan like this fully reversible with this knit. So that's something that I might make in the future and I would love to try out the longer version of the cardigan as well. So what did you guys think of this Marlo sweater? Please let me know in the comments below if you like this project. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. I post lots of sewing related content and I don't want you to miss out. Okay guys, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.